All right, welcome into the coffee hour, powered in part by Sonic, Newberry's favorite drive-in. Today is Newberry College Day here on the coffee hour. We welcome you into that program here this morning, and we'll uh, introduce you to the first of several guests in just a minute. And again, good morning. Welcome into the coffee hour this morning. And we have several guests coming up on the program today from Newberry College. And our first guest is Susan Ludwig, who is head of our nursing program at Newberry College. Good morning, Susan. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you. Great to have you here. I think you were here as we were talking a little early when you first came to Newberry a couple of years ago. I think you're right yeah. with Dr. Parrish. I think it was at least two years ago. Yeah, so welcome back. And, uh, boy, do we have some exciting news to talk about. Uh, obviously, just announced a couple of weeks ago, the construction on the new uh, Nurses and Health Science Building will begin pretty quickly here. We are so excited. Um, yes, they're going to start construction sometime within the next month or so, mm -hmm. start moving some dirt around. And um, it's really um, stirred a lot of extra energy in our department on campus. And so we're thrilled. We're just absolutely thrilled. Well, you know, the thing about the nursing program at Newberry College is that if you get through that program, if and when you get through that program, you pretty much got a job already. And in most cases, you have one before you finish. Oh, my gosh, yes. I think um, probably 99% of the students that graduate at um, graduation or painting already have a job lined up. Um, and maybe the few that don't um, just are not sure exactly where they want to go. They're getting married or moving out of state or something right. like that. Right. So, yeah, it, it's the, the job outlook for them is outstanding. Well, talk a little bit about how you think uh, the pandemic has changed not only your program, but maybe the outlook of those who are going through it because it has been an unprecedented kind of thing. And the nurses in this country are they're the ones right there on the front line. Right. In fact, some of our nursing faculty and I have been talking about the resilience that these students have and the nurses is just, it, it's incredible. Um, it's inspiring that these students um, are so motivated that they want to do nursing, that they want to come in, they want to be successful, um, despite the fact what's going on with COVID the last couple of years, um, that they feel called to do this. Um, so, um, like I said, just it, we were just amazed. We can stand back and just be inspired by them and the nurses of what they do mm -hmm. for us. Talk a little bit about what the program involves. If you come to Newberry College to be a nurse, what what's required of in that curriculum? Uh, what would you have to do to get into that program? Right. So they, um, we have two years of pre-nursing courses. Mm -hmm. They have to do biology, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, college algebra. Um, after two years, they apply to come in. They have to have at least a 3.0 GPA. Um, they also take a T's admissions test. Mm -hmm. So they have to score um, well on that test, which is kind of like an ACT. Right. Uh, most nursing programs have an admissions test, so they can apply to come in in the fall or spring. Right now, except 16 students. Um, that may change. We may add, a, you know, I may add that up to 20 here in the next couple years. Um, but right now, it's 16 students that we admit fall and spring. Right. So they take that pre-testing, if you will, and then, of course, when you're all done, you got to take another test. Exactly. They yeah. take the NCLEX. So our last semester. We have students right now that I'm, I work with every week. They're taking NCLEX prep tests. Mm -hmm. And so um, once they are ready, we send a letter into the State Board of Nursing, and that allows them to schedule and take the NCLEX. And we've done pretty well in that department the last couple of years. Yes, we are real excited. Last, um, the last two falls, we've had 100% pass rates. And so um, in the spring, we had a little bit of a dip. Um, but we are real excited about this class this semester. We're hoping great things for them that they should get 100%. Right. So you mentioned the possibility of expansion. Is that because of the expanded facilities or just uh, is that something you were going to do anyway? I think um, just after looking at the needs for South Carolina and mm -hmm. this community, there's such a huge need. So South Carolina is still ranked number four in the country of needing nurses because there's so many people that are moving to South Carolina and right. this area, um, that there's a huge demand still for right. nursing, for nurses. And so um, I think um, there's a possibility of being able to grow that um, incoming cohort. Right. And I, I assume most of the graduates uh, get their jobs in this general vicinity. Yes. So most of the students that graduate 
um, stay within this area, um, either Columbia, Prosperity, um, uh, Saluda, these surrounding communities. Right. So they're going back to their area, their, their family, mm -hmm. and they want to take care of their family and community in this area. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you actually have, don't you have some former students who now work in the nursing program? Yes. So we have, we're excited. We have Dr. Lindler, um, who was a part of the first nursing graduate right. um, uh, back in 2011. Right. So she's one of our assistant professors. And then Professor Bickley um, graduated in 2014 right. from the nursing program here at Newberry College, and she's also a nursing faculty with us. Well, I just think that's an awesome uh, story right there. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. And so at Penning, um, we talk about that. We, we introduce them and talk about that they were part of this nursing program and just being able to um, give back and be faculty. I know that is just a great honor. Speaking of Penning ceremonies, those are pretty special. Oh, my, yeah. We, um, in fact, we have a student, Lucy Lyons, who is on our field hockey team here at Newberry College, who will be gradu graduating this December, who's also going to be commissioned. Um, and ROT she's been an ROTC student. And we um, are gonna planning on doing the commissioning ceremony at the same time as Penning. And it is extremely moving. Wow. It's, yeah, we have to have extra Kleenex for that. Let's just say that. Yeah, I, can, I can imagine. Now, I heard you talking to Marshall before we went on the air about something you've got coming up in the next week or so, did you say? Yes, so next Wednesday, October 13th at Chapel, which we have Chapel from 10 to 10.30, we're going to have the Blessing of the Hand Ceremony. Right, right. And that's when we honor the brand-new nursing students this semester who are getting ready to go to clinicals. And so that is a very special time. They invite their family and friends to come to that. And so I welcome everybody to come next Wednesday, the 13th, to chapel at 10 o'clock. Very good. Susan, anything else you wanted to mention about the program before we uh, move along this morning? Um, just that we also have a new faculty member, Dr. Tawan Dockery. Um, she has her DMP from Liberty University. She joined us this fall. We're thrilled to have her. She has a vast amount of knowledge and expertise. Um, so we're really excited to have her on board with us this semester. Very good. Well, we are very excited about the program, of course, anyway. But uh, with this construction of the new building about to start, the, uh, the skyline is going to change at Newberry College in more ways than one, but certainly on the corner of Evans and College. So congratulations. We look forward to seeing that come to fruition. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us. That's Susan Ludwig, head of our nursing program at Newberry College, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, welcome back once again to the coffee hour, and we're going to uh, switch to our next guests here this morning. We have uh, two folks who are going to be talking about the upcoming Duffer Diversity and Inclusion Week, which will be October the 25th through November the 1st. And uh, we welcome uh, to the program for this particular portion of the program, Peggy Winder and Tracy Power. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you both here. Uh, Tracy, say hello again. I'll make sure your mic's working. Good morning. It's one more time. Good morning. Anyway, Tracy's mic is not working, so I'm going to start with Peggy. And uh, Peggy, talk a little bit about this. It all kicks off on Monday, October the 25th. Absolutely. We're really excited. And uh, the committee decided to do something a little bit different this year. So we're going to begin that week with a pet rally, which will take place on... Um, Setzler Field at 12 noon. We will also have that day a uh, speakers for throughout the day. At 12 noon will be Brandarius Jones, a 2020 graduate of Newberry College at 2 p.m. You may know this gentleman, um, Jimmy um, Moses King. Right. <laughs> he will be speaking at 2 o'clock. Um, and at 3.30, um, a recent graduate of Newberry College, Ms. Aubrey Guyton, will be um, talking. And they each will be talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion and their experiences with this um, particular topic. All right, very good. So uh, that kicks things off on, uh, on Monday. And uh, then uh, let's, let's go to Tuesday, and then we'll get to Tracy after that. Tuesday, October 26th, you've got your keynote address. Yes, we're excited about um, this um, gentleman, um, mayor, actually a former mayor, Billy, Billy Kajling, who used to be the mayor of um, Beaufort, South Carolina. He, along with Mike Greenlee, who is also a native of Beaufort, now living in New York, they will be talking about a book that they both co-authored. 
and the name of this book is Sharing Common Ground, Promises Unfulfilled but Not Forgotten, which offers a new approach to basically gaining a shared understanding of the value of each other. So we're excited about um, this keynote, and um, Dr. Duffer knows him very well. All right, that's on Tuesday. Then we got a show coming up at the Opera House uh, later that day, 7 p.m., across that river yes um through a collaborative effort as we do with the opera house every year um there's something um it's a musical journey across that river which will actually talk about how slaves turned cowboys helped settle the american west and i just want to make a note that this event will be free to everyone right. so we're hopefully we'll have a, a a nice crowd at that particular event yeah and we've been talking about that on the uh, tuesday show here because that's opera house day so we've been talking about that so that'll be uh, coming up as we said, Tuesday night, the 26th of October, 7 p.m. at the Opera House. Now, Tracy, let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. <laughs> so talk a little bit about your part in this. Well, uh, on Wednesday, uh, the college has for many years, of course, held chapel service on Wednesday. Until the early 1970s, it was mandatory. Now it is, of course, voluntary. But we usually have a good, right. uh, a good congregation every Wednesday morning. And our speaker uh, this week for Dufford Diversity Week will be Dr. Dufford. Uh, if you don't know Bill Dufford, uh, he will turn 95 next Monday. Uh, wow, that's amazing. He's a graduate of the class of 1949. He's a retired educator. Uh, he helped uh, integrate the Sumter County school system in 1969-70 and was really uh, forward-looking and progressive in education when many education administrators weren't. Uh, his memoir, My Tour Through the Asylum, a Southern Integrationist memoir uh, published by the University of South Carolina Press, is also award-winning. So we're delighted to have Dr. Dufford be the, uh, give the message at, at Wiles Chapel. He did ask us. He said, am I going to preach? We said, no, you're going to give the message. He said, all right. What's the difference when it comes to Bill Dufford? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then that afternoon is a workshop, Tearing Down the Wall of Prejudice and Discrimination. Right. Uh, Dr. Winder and Dr. Naomi Simmons of the sociology department have done this uh, for a few years now. And last fall, I was uh, privileged to be able to participate. When, it, when it's titled Tearing Down the Wall, what you do is you write on pieces of paper, you know, red like bricks, you write on pieces of paper uh, negative stereotypes uh -huh. about people, and you tape them up on the wall, and then one by one, you go up, you take the piece of paper off the wall representing that brick, that wall. Right. You say why that is not true, and you rip the paper in half. And it's in some ways cathartic. It's in many ways very educational. And people get more of a sense of community from it, I think, than a lot of workshops I've seen. Um, the one I attended last fall was mostly students, but there were some administrators and faculty there. And I hope that we can get more people to come. That's going to be at both noon and 2 p.m. Right. at the Center for Teacher Education in the Old Spear Street School. All right, that'll be Wednesday, October 27th. Again, the chapel at 10 a.m. and tearing down the wall noon and 2 p.m. Then we move to uh, Thursday. I want Peggy to talk about this. Uh, the movie Ruby Bridges is going to be shown in the Con Lecture Hall. Well, at the North Common, unless it's raining. And then it goes to the Con Lecture Hall. And uh, Ruby Bridges, for those of you who may not remember, she was six years old, one of the first black children to attend the integrated school in the Deep South. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a normal Rock Norman Rockwell painting of Ruby Bridges, if I believe that's true. That is absolutely true. And, you know, we're so excited about this. Um, Dr. John Lassane and his Call Me Misters will be actually sponsoring this um, event. So we're looking forward to it. All right, very good. So that's 7 o'clock. Uh, North Common. Tell everybody where that is. Um, yeah, we had a time change on that one, Jimmy. So that movie will actually be showing at 8 o'clock okay. and not 7 o'clock. Okay, 8 o'clock. So where's North Common for those who don't know? It's out um, by the football field, the area, um, the big open space out there. Okay, all right. So that's North Common. But if it's raining, Con Lecture Hall. Uh, it's over by Pearson Hall. For Pearson, those who okay, Pearson Hall. All right, so Pearson Hall, right out there where the the baseball field used to be between the uh, back of the uh, uh, LA's arena the KC center and the two uh, the two uh, dorms but again if it's raining it'll be a con lecture hall you got it okay now move on to friday for me if you will 
And I believe we'll get uh, hand this over to uh, Tracy. Uh, Friday, we're excited about this. Last fall, uh, the college honored uh, Ms. Mary Lou Anderson Glasgow, uh, class of 1970. She was the first African-American student at Newberry College, uh, entered college in 1966 as the only, that year, the only African-American student at the college, graduated in 1970, a longtime educator, and we honored her last year, had a reception. Uh, she told her life story. It was a remarkable story. And we, uh, over the year, the Durford Diversity and Inclusion Week Committee and other uh, folks in the administration decided that we wanted to do something more permanent to honor her. And so the Board of Trustees approved uh, the naming of one of the rooms at the Center for Teacher Education uh, after Ms. Glasgow. And so that, that dedication is Friday, October the 29th at noon. All right, very good. And then we move to, uh, I guess, the last day of uh, this particular celebration. And I'll go back to Peggy. This is going to be on Monday, November 1st. Uh, there'll be a performance at Wiles Chapel, Peggy, at 730. That is correct. Your collaborative effort, and we work with Patrick Casey from the music department. There's going to be, of course, a performance of underrepresented composers. This will take place again at 730 in Wiles Chapel. And this concert will feature the works of historically underrepresented mu musical composers, including Chickasaw pianist Jared, I think that's Impichichaw, Tate, and African-American violinist Jesse Montgomery. So we're excited about this. This is not the first year we've done this. We actually did this a couple of years ago, and um, it was a great turnout. So we're excited about that and working with the music department. All right, very good. So that's 7.30 Wiles Chapel, Monday, November 1st. So Dufford Diversity and Inclusion Week, including Dr. Dufford at Chapel, will be October 25th through November 1st. And uh, we'll be reminding folks about all of these events as we move along. Absolutely. And we also want to remind folks that um, masks will be, of course, expected. And there will be social distancing for those who do show up. Um, so I just hopefully, hopefully they'll adhere to those policies. All right. Very good. Peggy, thank you so much. Peggy Winder and Tracy Power. Thank you, Tracy, for your comments before you went on the air as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Great, great, great to have you both. All right, we're going to take another break, and we'll come back and visit with our next guests here from the college on a busy morning here on the Coffee Hour. That's coming up next. I think we're going to talk about homecoming, so stay tuned in. All righty, welcome back. It is 936, and this is Newberry College Day here on the Coffee Hour, and we have two more guests we're going to talk to this morning, and this time we're going to talk a little bit about homecoming, which is coming up October the 22nd through the 24th on the campus of Newberry College. And we welcome to the program this morning, Whitney Metz and Laura Beth Sheely. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Great to have you both here. So uh, we kick things off with uh, a golf tournament, which is always fun. Yes, sir. We'll have our annual golf tournament. It's our sponsored by our athletic club. It'll be at the Newberry College Country Club. It'll The shotgun start will be at noon on Friday, October 22nd. We hope you can join us. We have some spots for some teams still available. Right. I think I've been chosen to be on one of those teams, so uh, I'll be there for, at least for part of the day. Unless we, unless we play too long, then I'll have to leave. But uh, looking forward to that. Good. Well, don't play too long because we got some fun stuff for you that evening, too. That's right. The lawn party, which gets underway at 6. Yes, there is the lawn party at 6, and then immediately following that, we have a new kind of tradition that we're starting, and right. it's really exciting. It's called Rock the Quad. Um, we have a band that is features one of our alumni also. They'll begin playing at 7. So, you know, this one is open to the entire Newberry community. Everyone is welcome. You don't have to be an alumni, but there will be lots of them there. Right. Um, we just encourage everyone to come out, bring your lawn chairs, bring your coolers, hang out, and just have a good time. We'll have quite a bit of food trucks kind of lined up along the edge, too, so it's going to be a good time to just come and hang out and socialize with people, and we're just thankful that we get the opportunity to do Sort of that. like a big Friday night tailgate party. Absolutely, yeah. exactly, with a good cover band, too. Right. So uh, is this is not the first time for Rock Quad, I don't think. It is. It is? Okay. I thought they'd done that once before, but... Uh... 
sorry. News to us, but we're happy <laughs> to to reignite it and to have um, not only um, rock the quad back on campus, but to have our alumni and community back on campus. Right. It's been quite some time, so we're excited. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Friday, 12 noon, the golf tournament, lawn party, 6 to 7, and then rock the quad, 7 to 10.30. Now let's get to Saturday. Tell us what's happening that day. Yes, sir. Well, Saturday we have our annual Alumni Association Awards meeting. That's going to be at 10 o'clock. We have um, two years of alumni we're going to honor for their work in the community. Right for Newberry College, so we hope your friends and family will be able to come out to that. We have another signature event, a new event that we're starting, and that's our alumni market. That's going to be at 1130. We're going to have that right there on Bachman Court. We're right. inviting our alumni who have businesses that they would like to sell sweets and treats and necklaces and soaps to come by and um, sell those to the community. It'll be a great space to support our fellow Newberry College alumni. Right. We're right. also going to open it up to the Newberry, College, the Newberry community in general. So right. if there are other businesses. Please let us know. We'd love to host you out there to sell some of your goods. Well, all right, very good. So that'll take place uh, 11.30 to 3.30, and then you've got lunches going on all morning and afternoon. Yes, sir. We have several reunion classes this year. We Because we didn't have homecoming last year, right. we're honoring especially um, for their 50th reunion. And, Jimmy, you've got a couple more years before it's your turn, <laughs> but we're celebrating. Thanks for reminding me. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're, we're celebrating the class of 1970 and the class of 1971 this year, so we really look forward to honoring them and their graduation from our um, alma mater. Very good. And then uh, also the 1971 football teams having a reunion. Yes, sir. They had such a great year, um, the 1971 team. And so we're even going to honor them at the halftime show. So right. look for them and look for some fun announcement from them as well. Yeah, they uh, actually had uh, the most interceptions by any NCAA football team of all divisions in that year. And I think that's still a record, by the way. Wow. That's something we're very proud of and excited to honor this year at homecoming right. for sure. All right, then one of the fun events, uh, the homecoming parade begins at uh, 1.30. Yes, sir. We'll have the homecoming parade, and we're going to immediately follow that with our pep rally, and we're going to spice that up compared to how we've done that in years past. I'll let Laura Beth tell you a little bit more about the pep rally and a new feature we've been doing right. this whole year called the Wolves Walk. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to do the pep rally a little bit different. We just want to make it as interactive as we can. Um, we don't want anyone to miss out on it, so it's going to happen around the circle. Um, so... It'll be kind of facing all areas of campus, so everyone gets a little bit of the pep. Um, right. We're excited about that. And like you said, that'll happen at 1.30 or 2 o'clock immediately following the parade at 1.30. And then around 3.30, closer to game time. It's something we've been doing so far all season for our home games, and it's really been a highlight for fans and the players as well. The Wolves walk. Um, the players leave their pregame warm-ups on the field around 3.30, and they go back to their locker room, and we've had – the cheerleaders kind of line up and set the precedent for where all the fans stand and just cheer on the team as they go back in the locker room for the last time before the game starts. It's a big morale boost for them and for everyone before they go into the game. It's such a great fun thing that we've been doing, and so we're excited to introduce it to the people who haven't been at every other game, but we'll be there for homecoming. Right. I've uh, had a couple of grandchildren that have gotten some high fives during that Wolves walk, and they're very excited about that. So that's a nice uh, new addition. And then uh, there is a football game, of course. Yes, sir. We're going to play football against um, Carson Newman that day. Coach Knight is really pumped and excited to get the team out there. We're excited to hopefully get another W on our scoreboard. for this. Hopefully two more before then. Uh -huh. Oh, well, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for <laughs> sure. So, but, uh, yeah, Carson Newman and Newberry at four. And then the uh, Madrigals at Wiles Chapel later? Yes, sir. So our Madrigals, this is also a reunion for them. And they're going to be rehearsing right after the game. And then, Jimmy, I'd love to tell you, um, they're going to be performing at worship service on Sunday morning at okay. 1030. Okay. So our Madrigalian alumni, they'll be out there. In addition, we will have Bishop Kevin Strickland. He is a proud Newberry College alumni. He's a member of our Board of Trustees. He will be preaching and presenting at the 1030 worship service, a memorial service on Sunday morning, the 24th. So again, alumni are invited, but the whole community is invited. So please come out and hear some of the good news and the word from Bishop Strickland. All right, very good. So that's a Friday through Sunday. That's the lineup. I'm just looking through this brochure, by the way, at all these reunion pictures. And uh, it's kind of interesting to look back at how uh, young those folks were. 
Yes, sir. They were young. And, Jimmy, you were young, too, so we're yeah. playing in yours, like we said. All right. So I think you had something else you wanted to mention, Whitney? I just wanted to mention um, COVID just a little bit. You okay. know, um, we, we hold off because of um, COVID last year, but this year we will have some guidelines in place. And so when you're in a campus building, you will be required to wear your mask. But our current campus policy is that when you're in an outdoor space and socially distanced, you don't need to wear a mask. But in order to get into the game, you will need to wear your mask okay. in order to be in the stadium. All right, very good. And I noticed one other thing here in the brochure. I don't know if we mentioned this, the virtual auction. Yes, sir. Um, so we have a virtual auction that will begin October 17th and run through October 22nd at midnight. Um, we'll, you know, be promoting it throughout Rock the Quad event too, but it's going to go on all that week. Um, you can access it by going to event.gives slash homecoming 2021. There's lots of great items up there. There is um, a kayak, so some nice coolers, some different little goodie bags. I mean, we've really gotten a lot of great things, and so we're excited about that, too. Um, and like I said, it opens on October 17th, and will run through October 22nd at midnight. All right, very good. And that's another way to support the college, I assume. Absolutely. Yes, yes sir. That yeah. supports the college and our alumni association. Okay. That helps them give out their annual scholarships to our right. students. Very good. So keep that in mind as you make your bids on those uh, items. You might want to up your bids just a little bit just a little, just a bit, little bit or a lot of it yeah, exactly all right uh, whitney thank you so much or beth thank you anything else you wanted to mention no sir we just look forward to seeing our alumni and our community at homecoming see you soon guys we will see you then and of course it's so great to be back uh, to at least having a homecoming you mentioned earlier that when you're going to make the awards the alumni awards you're doing it for two years and that's because you didn't get to do it last year yes sir yes sir so it's, it's been a tough couple years with covid but we really really look forward to honoring these alumni and our whole community. All right. Thank you both very much. We'll see you soon. All right. Uh, that's going to do it.